Back to the Sony camera again. Yeah, I was using the Sony bloggy and battery had died. So I put it on the charger overnight and used it today and it hardly worked at all before the darn thing died again. Battery didn't take a charge. But it's uh, my own fault. It's because that camera did not come with a charger. And it's got a little removable battery pack that looks similar to the one in my Sony camera. But it's a little bit smaller, so I can't charge it with my Sony camera charger. And the only way I have been able to charge that camera so far is to plug it into a USB port. Which the USB port on my Mac laptop, because of where it's positioned, I can't plug that stupid thing in. And uh, so I have to plug it into another laptop, and then I have to leave the laptop on for that port to be live to charge it overnight. It's a pain in the butt. I got a new phone. I got the new, um, well, not new. I got a Samsung S3, and it came with a USB charger. And I noticed that, you know, it comes with a cable that converts from full-size USB to mini USB, and you can unplug it from the charger. And I found the camera plugs right into it, and the charge light comes on. So I thought, oh, great, I can use my my little... Uh, USB charger that came with my new phone to charge that camera but for some reason what happens is the charge light goes out prematurely and it doesn't stay charging I don't know if it just doesn't have enough power or, uh, because it's only for charging a phone or what but obviously I can't use that so if I'm gonna stick with this camera I'm gonna have to get a uh, a new charger for it or something now let me show you just so, so you know what the heck I was talking about basically you get this on the camera here you get this thing that flips out and there's the USB, but I can't plug that into the side of my 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 Mac laptop because of the way the USB port is. This won't plug in far enough, so I'd need an a, like a USB extension cord, and then I could do that. So I could plug this into another laptop. Problem is, one of the laptops the hard drive fried and it already had issues. Now it's got even more issues. Um, battery on this camera it's a nice little battery that would indicate to me that it's supposed to just be able to be popped in a Sony charger but it's different enough from the battery on the Sony camera that it's smaller so I can't do that so I don't know there must be a optional accessory that was the charger for this camera but anyways I digress so what I was showing you on that camera outside when the battery died was that before I took this down here, I took a putty knife and I cleaned off all the really heavy dirt and grease that was in there. And this whole area has actually got an indentation that was just chuck full all the way up to the brim. So I cleaned all that heavy stuff out. That's that much less stuff that I have to worry about settling in the bottom of my parts washer tank and turning into a sludge in the bottom that's going to have to be cleaned out at some point. cleaning this up really well because I want to see if there are any numbers or anything else on this thing that's going to be a clue as to who makes this and what it is because then if I can Google that, I'll probably find a lot more information out about it. Sure is interesting how this thing appears to be made. This whole bottom unit is solid. It almost appears to me like this whole top unit threads into that. I don't see a snap ring holding it in there. But I certainly do not want to mess with taking that apart if I can avoid it. Well, there are no metal tags anywhere on this to indicate uh, part numbers or manufacturer's name. Um, the only th markings I can find are stamped by hand in this boss right here. There's 
number 767, then a space, and then a 125, and then a space, a large space, and then it looks like maybe a 4 at the end, as best as I can tell. I don't think that's going to tell me much. It's casting numbers. This could even be a date, 767. could be July of 67. Pretty sure that's a 6. Yeah, that's a, definitely a 767. But they're kind of crooked. You could tell that was hand stamped. And then here on the casting, there's a little raised area, a little raised rectangle that has a, a number. That's more likely, a, if anything, that might be a usable number. It has quite a bit of paint on there. Where the paint's flaked off, I can clearly see the number, so I think if I get some of this paint off of here, I'll be able to read that number. No, not yet. That's the trick. <laughs> well, sometimes it's a delicate balance take off too much paint and sometimes it's even harder to read than when it had the paint on it. That's about as good as I can get it. And I still can't make out all the numbers clearly. I can make out some of the digits. But it's not going to help me much because I can't make them out all clearly. When I step back it actually looks like uh, 2503 but then when I look at it up close I don't know. But I just took a still high resolution picture of that and what I'll do is when I put that on the laptop screen, lots of times I can actually uh, see it better. Even with the magnif magnification, when I, when I try and look at it through the magnification, it, it uh, doesn't always clear up. You can see that actually it doesn't look too bad right there. Well, enough about that. Let's look at the... Uh, seal situation we've got up top here and it looks like now that I've cleaned it out I can clearly see a uh, well, you guys can't see that oh, I forgot to widen the shot hold on alright so what we've got is we've got a snap ring pretty straightforward so we'll take the snap ring out question is will this shaft actually pop out with the seals once that snap rings out we shall see snap ring pliers make quick work of that now it's interesting now that I've got the snap ring removed it's like there's a whole nother crop of dirt that was underneath it there Let's see if I can't find something well that almost looks like a part number on the top of that seal looks like there's a part number visible on that see that or not but yeah this camera's not going to be able to zoom in on that but now I've got a pretty uh, pretty blatant part number right here on this seal 5688229 right, write that down well it's interesting it's clearly got a, a 5688229 here with a dash after it and then there's nothing after the dash but then way around on the other side over here it says F as in Frank or Foxtrot K as in Kilo 11 so maybe you have to put the dash FK11 maybe you have to put the FK11 after the dash on the end of this I'm not sure so but that's a couple of good numbers I can uh, well, that's a good number right there. I can Google with or without the FK-11 and see what comes up. Um, <clears throat> you know, what what that is, if that's just a lip seal and then behind it there's more stuff, I don't even know. I guess since I uh, now have... There's no reason for me to believe that that shaft is just going to pop out. That shaft is probably attached to something in there that's much bigger and is not going to come out of there no, no way, no how. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig that seal out of there and see what's behind it. So 
I'm going to use a sharp little awl, try and poke a spot through so I can pry. Right, that's through the rubber, but there must be a See, it should be metal behind that. It does look like there is. Uh, it's actually. It should be sharp enough to do the job. <laughs> that is an interesting seal setup. That is a lip seal. And it's got this strange backing to it. This, If there's metal in there, it's inside there. And then right down below, we got another one. I'm thinking maybe this is what they meant by a quad seal that I was reading about online. Maybe they stack four of these suckers. So let's see if we can't get the numbers off of this before I destroy it. This looks like a 21366 GS. All right, hold on. All right, so there's a GS and then there's a space, and then there's a 21366. Then there's another space, and we got a nice big number here. Five, six, eight, six, five, two, six. Five, six, eight, six. Five two six. Now the seven digit number like that first seal had. And then there's another number, another space. 133. So we'll call this number two. The top one will be number one. What's happening with that one is I think that the uh, my little awl is just slipping between the uh, between the lip and the shaft. Let's get some let's get some heft to it with that one. That one's not coming out as easy as the last one. It took a little more doing. I was able to finally poke through. Now that's more of a conventional seal. What I just pulled out right there. I almost pulled out. Not quite out yet. What I mean by conventional seal is that it's got like the metal frame. It's probably got a concave area on the bottom side. There's something coming out with it. Oh my, what we got there? Oh, that's the spring. Okay, so that's a sp spring seal. That's the more conventional type of shaft oil seal. You see this little spring normally is inside there, and that's actually when it's not broken like that one. It's normally what tensions this thing. I wonder if that was broken already. Or did I do that? If I did that just now, or was that already broken? That's the question. Now, here's the thing. That's it. This seal and then that other seal are all that's in there. How do you like them apples? The next thing down, I can see 
sure looks like a bearing to me. Matter of fact, I can see writing on that Hyatt, H Y A T T, made in USA. And it's even got a number on it. It's a either a six or a one. No, either a six or an eight, one forty-five or B one forty-five or B fourteen S. I don't know. It's a bearing. That's it for seals. Let's see if we can see how that shaft looks. Well, it's really hard to see down in there, but I'm happy to report I do not see any signs of grooving on that shaft. Grooving. Um, I don't think that the shaft over time has worn a groove in this the shaft. I meant to say, I don't think the seal over time has worn a groove in the shaft which can happen and the problem with that of course is that when you go to put the new seal on it doesn't seal that feels good what I'm doing is I'm taking this little pick tool I'm holding the stylus end of it there on the uh, shaft and dragging it up slowly and feeling the vibrations with my finger there was a really deep groove there I would probably see the, 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 the thing move as it went over the bump or the valley there's nothing there's nothing there I like it I like it a lot there is only the slightest amount of scoring No, actually, I don't even think that's, I think that's just a little discoloration from when it was being machined originally. That's looking good. Oh, yes, sir, I like it. Take a little bit of a close-up look there. I don't know if you can see that or not. 